Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about why you can't stop crying in the menopause. Now if you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be reminded of any new videos each week. So why can't you stop crying in the menopause? This topic proved to be very popular with my last menopause live chat. It was amazing the number of women who were commenting on the fact that they just couldn't control their, their crying. So I decided to dedicate a whole video to this particular symptom. So is it a menopause symptom? And the answer is definitely yes. Just from all the, the responses that, that come in, a lot of women do suffer from this. It seems to be one of those phases, so it's not something that you're going to get right the way through the menopause. So you might find this is something that only lasts a, a few months, may, maybe at most, or, or a little bit longer. But there's different types of crying. Some women find that they have crying spells where they, they will literally just cry at anything and everything. It may well be that it's just certain things will trigger the, the crying. There's also uncontrollable crying and this is quite a, a, a surprising one. And I know it, it's one of the symptoms that I will never forget that happened to me going through the menopause. I found myself in a moment just crying my heart out. It was almost like a, a sense of the world was going to be end. It was, it was such a feeling of sadness and, and desolation. And after about five minutes, it went. And I was just astounded because it was as if it, it hadn't have happened. So the uncontrollable crying can hit you anytime, any place, anywhere. Um, and it can really take you by surprise and also obviously if it, if it happens at work or, or you're in company, it can be really disconcerting and also um, quite embarrassing too. You might find that you just get weepy and more emotional. So I know a lot of women tell me that they start crying at films that never used to bother them. They'll cry at articles in, in the news or articles in newspapers and magazines. And, and some women have said that they've had to stop watching the news. They've had to stop reading newspapers because it just upsets them so much every time they, they look at a program or read one of, one of the articles. You can also feel more vulnerable, so you, you just feel a lot more kind of down, a lot more weepy generally, and you may find that you're affected by things that never used to bother you before. Maybe somebody makes a comment, you, you can take things slightly the, the wrong way, you, you become much more sensitive to what other people are saying and you can end up crying because you might feel a little bit hurt or um, uncomfortable by the things that they've said, which they didn't mean and, and you know sometimes we can end up taking things the wrong way and that can contribute to this whole um, teariness and, and feeling really low and down. So why on earth does this happen? It's nearly always due to low estrogen. Estrogen is our happy hormone. It makes us feel good. It also acts as an antidepressant. So unfortunately, as our estrogen starts to fall, as we go through the perimenopause and the menopause, that will affect our mood and that's what can bring on the teariness. And very often this is why it's just a phase because you might find that the times when your oestrogen has a sudden drop or a sudden decrease are the times when you feel um, more vulnerable and, and weepy and e emotional. It can also be lack of sleep. You know, if you think about it, if you're getting night sweats, if falling oestrogen is affecting the quality of your sleep, then you're going to be much more emotionally raw anyway, just because you haven't had enough good sleep. It can also be due to stress. We're a lot more stressed. We feel stress a lot more in the menopause. So if we're in any of these situations, then our emotional control will decrease and things will upset us a lot more easily. What can you do to tackle this? There are a number of natural remedies that can certainly help. 
Hypericum is a lovely one. It's also known as St. John's Wort. Um, this is very good for low mood and anxiety. The only thing with this one, it takes about three to four weeks to kick in. So it's not something that's going to help you straight away. And there are a lot of contraindications with prescribed medications. So if you're on things like HRT, then you can't actually take it. But if you're not on anything and you feel your mood's a little bit low and you're that little bit teary, it can be um, a really lovely remedy. We've also got ginseng. Ginseng can be a nice one too for um, lifting the mood, for making us a little bit more emotionally robust. This tends to be a short term one which fits in really nicely with um, this kind of phase in the menopause. This one tends to work that little bit quicker so you'll, you'll get quicker results um, compared to the hypericum. You can look at our menopause support if it's appropriate. Fermented soya is known to very gently raise and balance oestrogen levels so it will help in that way. You can also look at our flower essences. These are lovely for any kind of emotional situations. You could look at the emotional essence, which is a really nice one, or if it's more kind of low mood, then you can look at our mood essence. These are ones that you can keep in your bag. You can carry them around with you. And if, you've, if you're feeling particularly vulnerable at any given moment, you can just put a few drops straight onto the tongue and very often that will help to just bring you out of that particular situation. Remember the magnesium, this is vital. You know, oestrogen is your happy hormone and magnesium is, is your um, happy mineral and that will help to keep your mood a lot more stable. And if you want to add in some um, B vitamins as well, that's also a great idea. And it's fine to take those together. Other things you can do are kind of more of, of the physical ones. Exercise is really important. Exercise um, gives us that really kind of good feeling. It can raise our serotonin levels, which will have a real beneficial effect on our mood. And I know if you're really down, you, you don't often feel like exercising, but even a 10 minute brisk walk in, in your lunch hour, um, if, if you're at work or at some point during the day, can be enough just to lift your mood that little bit more. Talk to family and friends. If you're doing a lot of crying um, in a family situation, how do they know how you're feeling? All they see is, is, is mum or, or partner um, seemingly crying all the time. So it's really important to let them know, even if you can't really explain how you feel, is just to say that you're feeling a little bit more emotionally vulnerable, you're going to be a little bit, you're, you know, you're going to do a little bit more crying, and maybe when that happens, if you could just have a hug or um, if someone could make you a cup of tea, and very often that's enough just to bring you out of that situation um, as well. Work colleagues too, I mean, it, it's a difficult situation here because you don't want to tell the whole world um, what's going on, but maybe if you have one or two close colleagues at work, and you, at work you could maybe just mention that to them and, and just say, look, this is what's happening at the moment. Nothing's wrong, it's just that I'm a little bit more um, emotionally fragile at this point. And very often knowing you've got extra support will be uh, of great help too. Look at your diet, just make sure you're eating enough of the right things. Um, a lot of caffeine, fizzy drinks, fruit juices, high salt and sugar foods will affect your emotions much more. So just be aware of um, how often you, you're having those in your diet. And remember the water because dehydration will affect our mood really, really quickly. Um, and just making sure you're getting enough water during the day can make a, a huge amount of difference as well. Is there any point here when you may need to speak to your doctor? Yes. If it's getting to the point where your mood is really sinking, if you find you can't get out of a low mood or a, a crying mood, if you start to feel depressed or despondent, then it's really important here that you go and see your doctor. We have women that are suffering with this for months and months and you know not realizing that there are things that can help you out there so if you're in this situation please don't put out put up with it please don't be stoic and and you know think you can get through it 
if it's really getting bad and it's affecting your daily life and the quality of your life, then this is the point where you need to seek medical advice. If any of you out there have experienced this and have found ways in how to deal with it, then please let us know. We would love to hear your story. And until then, I'll see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.